Yo, what it do, what it do as we roll through your crew. This is motherfucking T-Scholar. And we're about to play a nice game. You can bet your bottom dollar. Because I'm running a meta BG. And it is also a non-ranked match. Because I do not have enough time to dedicate right now. I like to have at least two hours ahead of time. To have had three to be able to play a fucking game. But to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I have about... 40 something minutes. So, I'm gonna do my best and uh, just, uh, yeah, have fun. Alright, we have made it into the game, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Let's fucking do this. So, we have a pretty big map here. Reasonably big. I don't have too much experience with this particular map, but I do know that having a cheap flyer go into that font would be really ideal right now. So, oh, but I want to not see. This is how I like to play it out. I'm gonna get my my soldier out there first. My E soldier. He's gonna be able to get to this font at the exact same time that my death bird, my death bird, which I'll deploy next turn, will get to this font. See, and I said ahead of time I was just going to talk shit during this match. So, um, there's not really too much purpose in, uh, going too deep into things for this, for this uh, you know, particular match, but it is non-ranked. So I have a little bit of wiggle room to kind of not worry about shit right now, and I can just kind of play pretty, pretty much according to how I would play it anyway, without having to think too much, but... I'll have to admit, as soon as I have to start thinking a little hard here, so playing against KF, uh, there will be some silent times where I'll just be figuring out what am I doing, uh, you know, where speaking out loud isn't always the best way to do it, you know, it's, it's not like this is fifth grade, folks, you know, it's like, uh, you can't just be over here solving a big ass puzzle and giving a walkthrough verbally while you do it. You know what I mean? Sometimes sometimes it gets a little overwhelming, especially during ranked matches. But this isn't a ranked match, so once again I will have more wiggle room. Now another thing that I will enlighten my audience to is the deployment of my E soldiers. See now first I'm gonna get these two fonts. I'm gonna have a nice hefty amount of Nora next turn, so I'm gonna go ahead and end turn. This map isn't big enough for me to say that I would want to get away with a sneaky early Unholy Tomb right now, after having just got my bonds. It's, it's, it'll be a little bit too much of a tempo hit. Now, it'll be very simple to do this now. Um, I'm gonna put my E-Soldier there, I'm gonna deploy my other E-Soldier, and they're basically just gonna take turns hexing right now. And, um, this guy's gonna take a little bit of damage, but he's gonna be able to survive, and, uh, you know, with his ghostly qualities, he'll be able to. Okay, now, for sure, this Elven Taskmaster, Master, Master, is surely going to go into this font probably next turn. After all, I just put my E-Soldier there. Now, he might go back and try and solidify his defense with this Taskmaster. So that's what I want him to do. But, it's like, I have two options here, really. Did I scry yet? No, I didn't. Well, with Haunting Grip, now we have three options, because Haunting Grip is always an option. Because it's OP. But um, here we have an afflicted corpse and a shadow shank out of the VG that I run. Now, shadow shank, instant kill, can pick up the Nor Globe, that's great, but it requires more setup than that. Shadow shank shouldn't really be used as a defense mechanism, unless if you know for sure you're going to have some kind of worthwhile melee coming in uh, that definitely won't kill the shadow shank, and you know, if he tries to contest the font, you can just Shadow Shank him, and, you know, especially if it's a faction that doesn't have too much protective things, then you can just say, okay, I know what this faction runs, I can Shadow Shank him. Only then you can use Shadow Shank for defense mechanisms. Otherwise, Shadow Shank you should use with some setup, because as soon as he gets stealthed, it kind of becomes a guessing game of where's the Shadow Shank now, and who is the target for that Shadow Shank. And how I like to play it is I like to look at what champs are on the board and how much they cost. And then once you look at how much they cost and you start prioritizing them that way, you can start to break it down between, okay, this one's 80 nor, but this one's 85, and this one can do specific things while this one can do other specific things. Which one is going to be more of a headache to me right now? 
And uh, also you have to take into account like what damage will I have done already? See, so this bitch is going to be able to hit me next turn. One, two, three, four. Um, if I move here. But if I am here, she won't be able to hit me next turn with that magic attack arrow singer. Now, what, uh, what's going to happen here is if things, going accor if things go according to plan, I'm going to be able to cons consistently hex whatever one champ is in the way of this font, and these two E-soldiers are just going to have a merry old time taking turns being dicks. And, um... Hmm, he's playing very interesting right now. I put down an Afflicted Corpse. Afflicted Corpse is one of my favorite champs to run for a defense mechanism, because as you can see, often it'll lead them astray from what they were originally planning on doing. I'm going to precariously move this death bird over here to go and get in his top farm there if he tries to move too much offensively. And in the meantime, like I already figured out, if I move here, unless it's preparation, did preparation tick already? It did. Okay, so if I move here, she can't attack me next turn. And by she, I mean the arrow singer. I'm playing a game against Trev the Gamer, who, uh, <laughs> well, I'll talk about that later, but, um... I'm pretty sure that's a dude, so I'm not calling a dude a she, you know, I'm not trying to insult anybody here. And, uh, yeah, um, you know, just a little something to back up an afflicted corpse is always a good thing. It gives him something to make use of his locust swarm, because then you can locust swarm, come in with attacks, and it's automatically a kind of a power turn. Now, he's got three champs out. If I have initiative on my death grade, one, two, three, four, five, six, nope, oh, he's going to be one off from attacking, unless it goes a stealthy out, and there isn't. Now let me see if I can hex. Nope, just out of range of hexing. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to get the Death Fairy out now, and move it right here, and uh, rest be assured, this font is going to be under heavy pressure next turn, and he's going to have to prepare for that. And if he leaves this font alone next turn, not only am I going to contest the font up here, if he doesn't deploy enough defense to scare my bird away, but I'm going to put either a Shadow Shank or something else pretty beefy up, possibly a Stitch Tyrant. Because, um, I have two fonts right now, plus my avatar, plenty of Nora. I kinda don't need the Unholy Tomb at this point, and this is precisely why I advocate specific times that one should deploy their Unholy Tomb in the guide that I read on the books. Now look, it's this. Rage of the Circle. I'm pretty sure what this guy has, yep. So he's got Feedback, Manic, Limbo is my favorite part about this guy. And as soon as I kill him, it's going to be basically just a tempo boost for me. And that's exactly, that's perfect. I would love that shit right now. You know, and I can really be a dick if I want to just like spam Haunting Grip on him right now and say, you know what? Haunting Grip killed this guy because that's so much damage plus the Locust Swarm or whatever else I'm going to do at the time. And, um... Yeah, Haunting Grip is OP, and uh, I'm surprised it was boosted to how it is in the first place. Originally, it did not do the whole ghost thing that it does now that gives people a headache. What is he doing? Is he gonna melee my Death Fairy? Bitch! Do you know how quick my Death Fairy is? He's gonna fuck your shit up. And I can kill this banner if I want, but that's kind of a waste of time. Who's, who's, who's worth the hexing right now? This bitch has 8 people. Surge enemy, that is the bitch that needs the hexing. But she's been all trying to be sly with it. Now, if I really want to be a dick, I can haunting grip this arrow singer. And then his magic damage is put on a kind of lock. And also, he left this font alone with just this relic, so it would be a perfect case scenario to Oh, I'm out of range! Well, I'm not going into the font with the death fairy, so let's see. What? Nope, not enough spell breaks. So, you know what? I'll be saying fuck that fox and fuck that arrow singer. I'm gonna do what I do. This is how I roll. Uh, I really want to hex her right now, but I want to do more damage. So I have to make a decision here too. She can arrow show. Ooh! Yeah, Death, Dead Fairy is a little too injured right now, and I'm concerned about him. So, I am going to. Uh, 
yeah, I'm gonna just deploy some big beasties here to uh, kind of scare away this uh, competitor. And now would be a nice time to load the swarm, get that nice damage out of the martyr with the minus defense. And with that being said, now I can go into that part with the death with the death bird. I don't have too much problems. I can also engage this guy and give him a harder time getting my block. So Okay, this is in a bad position I'm playing it. I'm pretty sure we're gonna hit the 10 minute mark at some point. I called it 10 minute mark. And uh he nature rat. And ooh, he is just trying really hard to kill my death fairy, but this is why I hexed the ranger elite. And the cool thing is now, if I really believe this death fairy is just that screwed, hell, I can even suicide him at this point if I want. I can reanimate him for 65 Nora, get a whole new one back. Ooh, he's trying to be super slim sneaky with his fucking cast master. Master, got him. Master. Keep calling his name wrong. Ooh, is he just gonna give me this spawn? What you doing? What are you doing, man? What are you why? You're just gonna give me your spawn. Okay. Alright. Alright, you think you're uh you think you're in a cool little spot now. You can just go around slanging shots, getting rid of your preparation. All prematurely. It wasn't even at its full potential. Huh. Okay, so, uh, shit. I'm just gonna... Shit. Shit, I'm gonna have to give him that... I'm gonna have to give him that Norgood. For one. For two, I'm just gonna have to engage this. Have as much, uh, AP as I can next turn. And, uh, oh, should I use my harvester as a kind of barrier? Well, let's see, if I move him, if I move him here, I'll have to move here, 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 for speed, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so he could do that. Huh. Well, first of all, I want to reanimate this death fairy. So you're not going to get it by the hair of my So let's see, 8, minus 3, minus, ooh, so close, so close to death, so close, well, I could either confess this wrong, be a super dude, he'll kill it, well, no, he'll come close to killing it, but I want to kill this bitch, and, um, hmm, hmm, okay, alright, now, if he goes in for the kill on the death fairy, it's kind of a wrap, and I'm pretty sure he won't be able to. Yeah, he won't be able to. He will not be able to get my bot either. Was he gonna? Oh, I forgot to do anything about this up here. I guess Death Harvester is just like, uh, my job's done. He's not doing anything about me. I'm happy where I am, I'm safe, and that's kind of where you want your death bird to be, like during the whole game, really. Now if he leaves this alone, I can put my dust creeper up here as soon as I get that revealed, and then just get my shit off of this polluted martyr. He fell for it, he went exactly what I wanted him to do, went for the um, death fairy. Ooh, and if I pop my dust creeper here, get all those globes, that's plenty of Nora. And the thing about reanimate that makes it so cool is as soon as the champ comes back, it's like initiative plus, because it counts them as if they had already been deployed that turn. So he's going to come back with 11 AP, ladies and gentlemen, unless if initiative 1 hinders him a single point of AP. In that case, he'll have 10 AP. So let's see. 10 AP, indeed. I can double tap this motherfucker. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do, son. Double tap up in this bitch. Oh. Double tap up in the resistance magical. Who gave him that shit, man? Ah. The pain is incredible. 
I'm gonna just... Oh, sh what am I gonna do? Uh, oh my god, what can I do here? What can I do to be the most douchiest person? Because <laughs> at that point, this is all, that's all it takes. Okay, I'm gonna move my death bird in position to contest that block. I'm gonna leave my polluted martyr paralyzed, which I know is what is gonna happen, but I can just negate that with my, um, with my soldier. And yes, indeed. Oh, and now is the perfect time to drop that tyrant right there. I'm gonna, see, and I have just enough Nora now. See, now I, if I have a choice between, oh, okay, I can put an afflicted corpse down or unholy tomb, I have enough meat on the board. I'm gonna go for unholy tomb. Uh, yeah. I think that's that's pretty fair to say, because I mean, yeah. Oh, I was afraid of a dream box there for a second. I was like, where'd it go? So he can, one, two, three, four. Yeah, technically he can attack, but he'd be in a bad position. So I'm going to force him to get in as bad a position as I can with my death right here. One of my least favored runes to see on the board on my opponent's side the dreaded elven mage. And uh, he's gonna continue to contest this spawn, apparently. Yep, go for the kill. Pretty standard, yeah. Polluted Martyr's gonna be able to attack again, regardless of paralysis. Which is great. If I can get my Dust Creeper revealed as soon as possible, that would also be great. I haven't been scurrying that much this game. Probably not that good, but again, it is non-ranked. I would not be talking as much if it were ranked, because I have to think a lot more. Can't just be talking shit, which is the funny thing, because I'm saying for the ranked matches, I will be talking shit, but it's just going to be natural shit talking. Kind of doing it now, but there's still a degree of explanation I'm including into things, just because I'm the, the pressure really, I don't really feel any pressure at all in this match so far, to be honest. So if I move him up here, to be in just enough space for my Dust Creeper to pick up his globe, son, and he's about to die next turn from uh, short-lived. See, so when you see the counters on two and there's two left over, that means on their turn it'll be one. So, okay, five. I'm just going to hex him, you know, solidify the kill and the font, and I'll be able to pick up his Nora globe with the Dust Creeper. Uh, Stitch Tyrant is another OP rune. Not gonna end. I'm getting lag here, so there's the surrender. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, GG, oh. mate. Oh. GG. I didn't even have to use Haunting Grip, you know? It's a GG. If you don't even have to use Haunting Grip, let me whisper this guy GG real quick, as I like to do. And, uh, yeah, GG, mate. I'm sure we'll do this another time. You know, it's just, uh, how we do with forsaken motherfucking ways. So don't be a bitch about it. And enjoy the experience as it has been so far. And uh, that being said, thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. I am T Scholar. And uh, this has been Forsaken Motherfucking Ways.